Hello, my name is Maria Caprera, and I'm here to talk to you about the Indiana Bobcat. These amazing creatures are endangered and facing extinction, and today I will tell you about some of the problems they are facing and the solutions we can use to fix those problems. Follow me now to the glorious state of Indiana. The Indiana wilderness is thriving. The bobcats are keeping the animal populations in check and the ecosystem is in balance. For thousands of years, bobcats have existed and thrived in the Indiana woods. The cats prey on rodents and smaller deer and the balance is a perfect cycle. The bobcats leave the remains of their prey on the forest floor and the trees benefit and grow from their nutrients and the healthy trees provide food for the bobcats prey. Bobcats have always been an essential part of the Indiana ecosystems and they still are now. These creatures eat rodents and the rodents are a key species in the environment. They are a meal for the coyotes and other carnivores in the Indiana wilderness and if the rodents overpopulated from lack of being eaten by the bobcats then the carnivore population would soar too meaning big trouble for the larger mammals such as deer. This is why there should be more effort into saving them but somehow there is not. The northern two-thirds of the state is lacking the bobcat and suffering for it. Habitat loss and hunting has pushed out the bobcats in that part of the state and now there are almost none. In the 1900s, these creatures were very heavily hunted and were declared endangered in the state in 1969. Ten years ago, researchers estimated only 10 bobcats left in the entire state. Habitat loss is also a very devastating problem for this particular species because we, as humans, are at the center of it. New developments, cities, and roads are pushing the bobcat out of where it could once call home. Roadkill mortalities are rising because of this, and if they keep on rising, there won't be any bobcats left to hit. When I was a young girl, my Miami tribe lived on the presence of the bobcat. The families held them as pets and treated them as such. The cats brought balance to the ecosystem, and you could see that when the animals hunted in the spring, summer, and fall, not only did they themselves thrive, from the meal, but so did the trees and flora all around. The remains of the meal held nutrients, and when the soil absorbed these nutrients, the plants thrived. We could then harvest the fruit of their labor, picking hackberries, butternuts, service berries, elderberries, and cranberries. These foods were staples in our community, especially when they were dried and could be saved for winter. The bobcats we had held dear, and when they passed, it was a morning day in the village. When the men would go out to hunt, the bobcats would tail them, alerting the hunters to new trails and tracks in the forest that only the bobcats could detect. Our chief, Kimon Saw, respected the bobcat and saw that none of them were treated wrongly, malnourished, or abused. The animals also provided somewhat of a guard for our tribe. They could alert us to any dangers that lay outside our huts. The bobcats were a keystone of our people, and now that they are endangered, where our tribe was long ago thrived is now unrecognizable to what it was. The road may seem dark for the Indiana bobcat, however, we could light the way. Nature reservations in the northern half of the state would give bobcats back the home they once had, meaning a definite increase in population. Signs along the side of the road alerting drivers to be careful, or even a decrease in the speed limit along bobcat populated areas are both possible solutions to decrease the number of bobcat mortalities. Communities around the state could hold fundraisers to fund these protections. The bobcat needs to be saved, so what will you do? Donating to conservancies, putting up signs, and raising awareness for this creature are all things you can do to help ensure a good future for this incredible animal.